digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system, pho photosynthesis, light stage, Calvin cycle, respiration, glycolysis, citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, cell cycle, cell division, and my suffering. Hey guys, what's up? And today I'm going to do a review on The Walking Dead Season 4. The troubleshooting Frank Darabont's TV show is back after a roller coaster of fast and slow from season 1 to 3. So let's do a quick recap, shall we? Rick is a good man. He woke up one day in the hospital after an accident and the world seemed a bit different, maybe? He ran into a bunch of survivors and they all ran into another large group of survivors. Shit happened, they moved to a camp. Shit happened again. <clears throat> My throat happened. People died. They moved again to the prison. Then one of theirs, Andrea, ended up in another campsite r ran by a man named Philip, a.k.a. Governor. Governor was a bad person, so Rick and Governor fought with each other, and that's it. So here we are on episode one of season four. 30 days without an accident. Another slow and dragged episode from The Walking Dead. Starting off, we see big improvements in the prison. There are tents, a canteen, there are pens, you know, pig, cow, pens. I forgot what which animal. You know, like when I was watching The Walking Dead Season 4, it was like half a year ago. So don't judge me. And then there are farmland, even jail cells looked a little bit cooler in the prison. And we see people poking at walkers through the fence for like five minutes. So yeah, like there's one scene in this episode where they just poke walkers through the fence. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, the survivors were in a pretty good shape. Okay, so we got the backdrop. So what about the real plot of the episode? Uh, not much. It's like the writers looked at, you know, looked at their plot outline for the season and they're like, yeah, on episode one, you know, some dude's gonna die in a supply run. Something like that. Some crazy woman showing up and ended up badly yeah, also probably that. And uh, people are cool about that. Yeah, also that. That's pretty much the episode. <laughs> you know, whoever that, that, you know, that person is, you know, Beth's boyfriend, we just knew him. And a couple scenes later, he's, he's dead. It's not even a spoiler, because we don't even know that character that much. So my reaction to his death was like, oh... Okay, I guess. And Beth heard the news, and she was like, Oh, okay, I guess. So yeah, this episode is, um, okay, I guess. Moving on to episode 2, Infection. It's kind of weird, but this episode is actually quite excellently written. First, there's this flu thing everyone was dealing with and people were dying because of this flu, so it's like the Walking Dead version of Black Death. And there's a lot of scenes on this episode that started some suspenseful storylines. For example, the character arc of Lizzie had begun, and the ending also made Tyrese very angry. It's an impressive episode, you know, not like it's great or anything, but it's better than I thought. And yes, there's a couple of there are a couple of slow and redundant moments, but overall I quite enjoy this episode. Then it's episode three Isolation, another slow burner packed with pretentious and redundant moments. Although the story is still going pretty well, it's not that boring of an episode, not too silly, but it's still not that great of an episode. It's just okay, you know? I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm just going to be vague about it. Bad things happened, and everyone didn't know who did it, and when the show revealed who did it, I was like, yep knew it and i also like what herschel did 
caring for the weak. I really like Herschel's character more and more throughout the show. Over to episode 4, Indifference. Another one word title that starts with the letter I. Weird. Anyway, it's another slow episode. The governor still haven't returned to the show. The flu was still a pretty bad problem. I don't like the whole Carol and Lizzie storyline. It just feels so pretentious at times. You have to be strong because you are strong. You just don't know it, but you had it in you. <laughs> but I actually like the tension building up between Rick and Carol. I think that's pretty good. I also like the friendship building up between Daryl and Michonne. Nothing important happened on this episode other than Rick and Carol stumbling upon two strangers, one of which was the same, was played by the same actor who played Penguin from Gotham, and he looked like a junkie who's secretly a psychopath because he's always smiling and laughing over everything, woo, and then all of a sudden these two characters are gone again and it's totally irrelevant to the main storyline, so why are they even here? Why? Episode 5 is Internment. Starts with an I again. It's another super underrated episode of The Walking Dead where things get intense. Things went wrong and shit hit the fan. First of all, we have the whole flu thing where a flu started spreading and everyone who got the flu was dying. And man, that's actually very depressing. A disease that kills and spreads so quickly. Then we have the fence problem, which I never thought would be a problem. But basically, the walkers were trying to get in and they were blocked by the fence. Then clusters of walkers were about to push over the fence because of that much weight accumulated outside the fence. Seeing Herschel help people and being hopeful and optimistic is actually very aspiring because he believes that a sad soul spreads faster than a virus and that's a very healthy thought. Wow. Herschel was like a, a beacon of hope in this episode. And the story progresses on to episode 6, Live Bait, but this is kind of ironic because this episode tackles a completely storyline, like Walk With Me. It's entirely about Governor and what he did after the shootout last season. Although it is a slow episode, I actually surprisingly like this episode. We get to see Governor's good side again, and after the episode, I was actually convinced that Governor had changed and become a good person. Oh my gosh. And the ending is another unexpected and fun cliffhanger that I like. Moving on to episode 7, Dead Weight, which is basically a part 2 to the previous episode, because this episode is entirely focused on Governor and his journey till the present day in the story. I have a theory, and um, it is um, whoever wrote the previous episode, Live Bait, wanted Governor to become a good character, while the writer of this episode wanted Governor to stay bad. And that's why this episode felt a bit incons inconsistent and sudden. But whatever, that, that's just a theory. That's just a, a game theory. However, I totally enjoy the building up of the tension and the nice pace of the episode, and I also like the little climaxes to the scene, which are again really sudden, but also quite surprising. And I don't have much to say about this episode other than it's it's okay. I don't want to spoil anything, but this episode, pr pretty nice. Wow, Too Far Gone is perhaps the most tragic and heartbreaking episode of The Walking Dead so far throughout the series. Probably even more devastating than Evil Within from last season. The governor turned bad in the matter of barely one episode. And he managed to cause such a cataclysmic chaos on this episode in such a big jump from two episodes ago. And with some decent writing, powerful acting, and good execution of scenes, we have a surprisingly climactic half-season finale. I'm dropping a spoiler alert. So, Governor killed Martinez and Pete last episode and became the leader of their group. And then because of his personal grudge with Rick and Michonne, he decided to trick all of his followers to attack the prison. Rick and Governor had a talk and Rick insisted that they can live together in peace, but Governor was holding Michonne and Herschel captive at the moment, and Governor whispered, Liar. 
and just swinged or swang swung swinged a sword at Herschel and chopped off his head. I knew Herschel was gonna die at some point, but I was still really shocked by this. What saddened me even more was Rick's reaction to Herschel's death. Like, no! And he started shooting at, at, at the fence, you know, just impulsively. No! And wow, and Maggie and Beth's reaction? Heartbreaking, wow. And a fight broke out and bullets were going everywhere. It was chaotic. No! Then it's basically a very long winding gunfight plus a person to person fight between Rick and Governor. Michonne then helped Rick and stabbed the Governor but Lily was the one who actually killed Governor. What? Governor died and it was a relief, but the damage she had done was way more terrible. I feel like Governor deserved way worse. Judith also died and it was painful to watch Rick and Carl realize it, but actually, um, again, if you have watched the rest of the series, you would probably know Judith's actual fate. But yeah, Rick and Carl in a lot of pain, we've been there. Chaos and destruction and main characters dying, but this is even more tragic than any Walking Dead episodes I've ever watched so far. However, more complication and build up would be nice, but a great tragic episode this is. Over to episode 8 after. Yeah, the, the, the episode is literally titled After, which is a slow, sad, and small episode that features no one but Michonne, Rick, and Carl. What I don't like about this episode is the scene where Michonne had a weird dream and another scene where she just broke down in tears because she felt bad. The Walking Dead is about humanity and life, but that weird dream just feels like a, a little bit too much, you know, and it's just kind of pretentious. However, I really liked the drama and interaction between Rick and Carl and how Carl disrespected his father at first but later realized how important his father actually is. And it has a very happy ending. And if I were there, I would have cried too. Wow. Crying in joy. Overall, it's a nice little episode that feels very depressing and desperate, but there's still a bit of hope somewhere. Episode 10 is Inmates, and it's basically about the rest of the people other than Rick, Carl, and Michonne. We see Beth and Daryl trying to track down people, Tyrese and Carol watching over the kids. By the way, I really like the small Judith fate reveal. We also see Maggie, Sasha, and Bob trying to look for the bus, and Glenn and Tara also trying to look for others. Speaking of Bob... Like, I watched The Walking Dead Season 4 before I watched The Wire, and now that I've watched The Wire, I just can't stop thinking about D. D'Angelo Barksdale. <laughs> I appreciate how the writers didn't just dump away the whole Governor storyline, because Tara will be helpful to Glenn. And the ending is also pretty cool, and new characters are introduced, and it's an okay episode overall. On to episode 11, Claimed where the show continues to show everyone's life after that incident. So Rick stayed at a place alone and suddenly a bunch of guys just went in there and Rick had to hide if he wants to stay alive since these guys are actually murderers who killed one of their own just because they argued over a bed. Yeah, and that's a really interesting premise to be honest and it fits really well into the main storyline as well, surprisingly. At the end, all these events bring us to the whole sanctuary place which will probably play a big role in the future. Then it's episode 12, Still. Still, the characters hadn't reunited yet, but I have a strong feeling that they will. And this entire episode only features two characters and they are Daryl and Beth. They were still lost in the wild, trying to seek shelter and a good drink. And that's pretty much the episode. They haven't found the sanctuary yet. And they argued, they were cool again, and that's it. It's a filler episode, and you know it. People who tries to defend this episode will say that it's a great character development episode, but honestly, 
Daryl and Beth were pretty much still the same before and after this episode. Uh, but honestly, um, yeah, unlike the Rick and Carl development episode, you know, Rick and Carl actually had a father-son relationship and Carl struggled to survive on his own. I don't hate this episode, but it's not that impressive too. It's kind of boring and mediocre, to be honest. Moving on to episode 13, Alone, where it mainly focuses on two storylines, which is Daryl and Beth and Maggie, Sasha, and Bob. The first half of the episode is really just nothing but more Daryl and Beth. Then they found a place to settle in and things happened and they left again. Which is actually a bit intriguing and entertaining because Daryl and Beth encountered new people who kind of separated them apart. Anyway, concerning the other storyline, Maggie was really eager to look for Glenn alone because they were separated too. And Sasha had second thoughts about looking for Glenn and heading to this terminus sanctuary but at the end they were together and it was really optimistic and then bob was there too like when i was watching walking dead season four i didn't know bob was also the same dude in the wire the story progresses on to episode 14 the grove which is a quiet slow dark and somber episode this entire episode shows the journey of carol tyrese and other kids working their way to terminus and the first half of the episode is just really slow and usual, but all these drama happened in the last act, which escalated very quickly, so I'm giving a spoiler alert. Lizzie became very fond of walkers instead of living things. She thought they were friendly, but Mika and Carol kept telling her to not be close to walkers and kill them instead, which is the right thing to do, of course. But in order for Lizzie to show Carol and Tyrese that walkers are nice, Lizzie killed Mika and told Tyrese and Carol to wait and see her turn. She killed her own sister. Wow. And that came really quickly. It was almost like a hallucination. It feels like it. And Lizzie almost killed Judith too. Wow. But that's true. And that's terrifying. Then Carol and Tyrese realized that Lizzie can't be around people. So Carol ended up killing Lizzie. Which is very sad and uncalled for. But also necessary at the same time. You know? And now both sisters are dead. Carol opened up and told Tyrese that she actually killed Karen and David. Tyrese was really mad. Like what everyone would do. But Tyrese forgave her and that really shows how merciful and humane of a person Tyrese was. But I also appreciate Carol's honesty and Tyrese didn't have to know who's the killer indirectly from Rick. Which is an, a harder way for Tyrese to learn about the truth of Karen and David's death. I thought no one of significance is going to die along this trip to Terminus. Everyone's going... But this happened, and it's devastating. Over to episode 15, Us. Everyone's slowly working their way to Terminus. Oh, man. This episode mainly focuses on Daryl's life with the Claim Boys and Glenn trying to find Maggie. And yes, it's a good episode. After the startling and dark previous episode, we have a more uplifting and hopeful episode, which I love. First, I thought Daryl's storyline with the Claim Boys was going to suck. But no, we actually see small character developments and interesting plot in it. Well done. And for Abraham, Rosita, Eugene, Glenn, and Tara storyline, they went through quite a bit. Glenn and Tara found themselves in some trouble at the end, but turns out they can be saved. And Glenn had fulfilled his wishes. I'll say that much. And I don't know if the writers are trying to make the show more dramatic or... If the ending is really that humbling, but the ending is kind of cool. I, I like the ending. The finale is titled A, which made me wonder, how would the letter A fit into the storyline? Anyway, this episode is, had exceeded my expectations. It, it's an amazing finale for a dystopian and grim show like The Walking Dead because it gives an odd sense of hope and mystery. It's probably the best episode since Too Far Gone. 
Lots of things happened on this episode, and there's a freaking sweet cliffhanger. Oh my gosh. I'm giving a spoiler alert. Ooh. First, Rick, Carl, and Michonne encounter with the Claimers, and Joe, the head of the Claimers, wanted to kill Rick because Rick killed one of them. It was intense. Then Daryl showed up and told Joe to let them go. Joe got mad and told others to beat Daryl up, which also means they're gonna kill Daryl also. Then one of the claimers took Carl and was hurting him. And Joe was pointing a gun at Rick, so Rick was so triggered and he pushed Joe, so Joe missed the bullet. And then Rick and Joe fought, but Joe almost killed Rick and suddenly Rick bit Joe's throat and spit it out like a walker. And everyone was shocked at that moment. Like, like, I'm gonna have to put down my phone. Like, like Rick bit Joe in the neck. And it just bursted out blood. Just pssss. And that was insane. Then everyone was shocked and all the claimers were killed. Rick got so mad and he stabbed the last claimer again and again and again. Wow. Brutal. You know, that wasn't a, 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 a too pleasant of a reunion for Daryl and Rick. But that's pretty insane. Wow. And that's also a hell of an amazing scene. Then they reached Terminus. The people there seemed completely fine. And suddenly Rick saw one of the people there having Glenn's watch. And Rick immediately realized that they're actually bad people. So they ran and ran and they were surrounded later. So one of the Terminus people commanded them to go into cargo container which had the label A. And inside it were Glenn, Maggie and the rest of the team. Except Tyrese and Carol. So what the hell was going on? Who were they actually? What was going to happen next? We are yet to find out. Damn. Overall, this season is a hell of a ride. From the really worrisome and dramatic first half to the more personal and mysterious second half. For seasons 2 and 3, it's kind of inconsistent because of all of these filler and plot holes and just forgettable scenes. Good episodes are followed by bad ones, and the bad ones are followed by the good ones, but on the season, it's more consistent and stable. There are slow episodes, but doesn't mean it's bad. There are a lot of character developments on these slow episodes that I really enjoy a lot. Yes, there are flaws in this season also. Some scenes just comes out unnecessary, but this season is also packed with great moments, and that's really nice to see. In my opinion, this season is probably the best Walking Dead season amongst 1, 2, 3, 4. At last, the worst is episode 12 still, and the best is episode 8, Too Far Gone. A is a great contender as well. I'm saying the Walking Dead season 4 is mind-blowing, and I'm giving it a 9 to an 8 out of 10. Don't... Don't make the 9 to an 8 fool you. It's still amazing. An 8 is still amazing. So, have you watched The Walking Dead Season 4? From 1 to 10, how much would you rate it? Like if you like it and subscribe if you want more. They're fucking with the wrong people.